As chair of the Winter County School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to the executive order 2020-4, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which is authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirmed that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video and or electronic means. We're utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All the members of the school board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and public access uh, to listen to, if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number, uh, 643-876-9923. And the webinar ID number is 934-4119. Two six five eight. Password is fifty five ninety six sixty three. By clicking on one of the following website uh, addresses, and uh, that's Zoom, and providing the public information. Uh, excuse me. Providing public notice of this necessary information for accessing the meeting. We pre we previously uh, gave notice to the public of the necessity. Uh, necessary information for quite access in this meeting, including how to access the meeting through Zoom or telephonically. Instructions have also been provided on our website, uh, www.sau21.org, providing a mechanism for, public, for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems, uh, call 603-926. 8992 extension 103 uh, or email re evans uh, at sau21.org. Adjourning this meeting if the public is able to access the meeting. Um, in the event the meeting, uh, if, excuse me, in the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by roll call attendance when each member states their presence. Please also state whether there is anyone in the room uh, with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. We are now taking a roll call. Henry Marsh. Uh, here, no one in the room. Leslie LaFond. Here and no one, no one else. Sorry. Heidi Teresina. Here, I have family walking through now and then. Mike Rabideau. Here and just wildlife. Tony Delano. Tony, can you unmute, please? No, I'm here. Okay. Uh, no one in the room besides me at the moment. Okay. I have the roll call, Henry. Thank you. Uh, proceed, proceeding, um, we have a public hearing on the trust fund. Matt, are you leading this discussion? Um, certainly. Um, so um, this public um, hearing is to discuss the withdrawal from the building maintenance expendable trust. Um, and it's for the purpose of roof repairs. Um, these roof repairs are outlined in our um, roof, um, um, I want to say five-year plan, I was thinking of the term, but we do have a roofing plan that was, uh, that we worked with a roofing consultant, um, and this year we don't have a full roof replacement, but we have um, repairs. So as part of our budget process this past fall, um, we, um, we noted that we had, um, we were over our targeted building maintenance expendable trust target balance. Um, so we opted not to make a separate warrant article and we, um, knowing that we had these funds available in the building maintenance expendable trust. 
Um, the amount of the withdrawal is $59,100. Great. Thank you. And uh, is there any public comment on this uh, public hearing and the withdrawal or any board member that may want to make a statement here? And just so that any audience members um, need to know, you can always raise your hand or submit a question in the Q&A or submit a chat if you have any comments. Okay. Hey, Matt, I have one question. So this is Mike. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Is uh, this expenditure going to cover all repairs required for this year? Yes, so um, what they did is they did a thermal scan of all of our, um, all of our roof systems um, mm -hmm. to determine um, where, um, where there were leaks and where the repairs were necessary. Um, so that was um, completed by our consultant. They also did a, um, they walked all the roofs and examined them. Um, so this mm -hmm. was the result of that analysis, um, you know, which was conducted a couple of, I want to say two months ago. Okay, so it's, it's recent then. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Just, just to reaffirm uh, with Matt, uh, we'll also have a discussion uh, under D and new business on the withdrawal of the maintenance on a motion. Uh, is there anyone... Right. Right. So we'll 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 ask for the motion for withdrawal, and we'll, we also have um, on the agenda a, a, a motion to award the bid. Um, we did go through that RFP process. Thank you, Matt. Okay. May I, may I have a, a motion to um, end the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Thank you. It's Mike. Second. Thank you, Tony. Okay. And we'll have a roll call on the vote. Sorry. Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Tony? Yes. Heidi? Yes. And Mike? Yes. Okay. Thank you. At this time, we will proceed to the <clears throat> um, uh, May 20th, 2020 uh, board meeting. And uh, the first item is, uh, excuse me, the second item would be the minutes. Is there a motion to accept the minutes of our April 15th, 2020 regular school board meeting? I'll make a motion to accept the April 15th, as the 15th meeting minutes. I'll second that as submitted. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Okay, hearing none. Um, is Henry Marsh? Yes. Leslie LaFawn? Yes. Heidi Terracina? Yes. Mike Rabideau? Yes. And Tony Delano? Yes. I have the roll call, Henry. Thank you. I have the vote. Okay, um, moving on to reports. Um, we have a finance report. Matthew, is that coming from you? It is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we, we have included the um, fiscal year to date um, expenditure and revenue reports. Um, I, I mentioned at the last board meeting that we'd have an estimate for you for year end. Um, and now that we're, you know, roughly um, a month and a half um, from our fiscal year close, um, we, we do have a pretty good idea um, on how we, we will be ending the year. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, um, we, we are recognizing some savings um, due to the remote um, learning environment. Um, this includes transportation, um, heating fuels, electricity, um, supplies, um, stipends, professional development, training, um, 
and, uh, and other small like uh, like copier accounts, those type of accounts. Um, on the other hand, we did have added investments um, and expenditures um, due to this um, crisis, which includes um, you know, technology, um, software, subscriptions. Um, we had um, internet access, um, hotspots, um, our food service program, um, cleaning and disinfecting and PPE um, for our staff. Um, so when we look at the year end, um, there's, there's really um, two, um, you know, there's, there's two buckets um, that determine um, an, an unreserved fund balance. Um, one is unexpended funds. Um, so for this, for this fiscal year, we anticipate approximately $800,000 in unexpended funds. Um, the other bucket is unanticipated revenue. Um, and we're looking at approximately $350,000 in revenue above our estimates. Um, so, so that results in you know, about $1.25 million. Um, so we will be able to fund our expendable trusts. Um, we, we did, a, the, the community did approve um, funding our special education expendable trust with $75,000 and our health insurance expendable trust with another $75,000. So when we're looking at an unassigned fund balance that will be returned to, um, to the town to offset assessment, it's going to be you know, right around that $1 million mark. Um, this um, compares to our, um, you know, our five year average of approximately $579,000 that we typically return to the town. Um, and I will note that last year we returned $480,000. So as you can see, um, there is um, a significant increase, um, you know, over prior years. Um, we had, you know, also due to this, um, this economic crisis, we did um, make a commitment to not bring forth um, a list of end of year projects um, utilizing unexpended funds. Um, we, we are trying to be as fiscally responsible um, to to our community because we, we do understand that people are struggling. So we wanted to maximize the amount of money that we are um, returning to, to the community. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions in regard to specific line items or accounts or, um, or anything um, in regards to the finances. I think that's excellent, Matt. And I wanna compliment you and the SAU staff and also uh, Bill McGowan, principal of the uh, Winnicunit uh, High School. And uh, I, I would hope that this gets into the media that uh, returning close to a million dollars um, and that Winnicunit High School is physically responsible. And we're looking at uh, the total picture, not just uh, this year, because traditionally, as you mentioned, we're, we're giving back a half a million um, and we're just not utilizing monies just to utilize the money because the money was in the budget. Um, and uh, uh, I, I want to uh, compliment also uh, one of our board members, uh, Tony, uh, who's served on our budget committee for uh, a, a few years here and now on the Winnicott kind of board uh, for helping and uh, to promote a budget. And again, I wanna thank you, Matt and uh, Bill McGowan. Thank you. Thank you. Could I ask just one quick question uh, just to follow up? I'm just curious if there are any um, students, I know you talked about the hotspots and making sure that we had internet for all our, our students. How has that gone? Is it, does every student have internet access right now? Um, so from a overall perspective, um, you know, I, it, it went well. Um, we, we, we were able to, we did survey 
of our students. We did provide internet um, hotspots to those students that um, did have a need. Um, you know, I, this was a learning process. Um, so, um, you know, we did have a few instances where um, they required um, internet that for the hotspot needed to be updated, the software updated, um, where we were, we had some families that didn't res respond and we didn't, we didn't know that they didn't have that access. That was really more on the elementary side. Um, so it didn't, I don't think that affected the high school as much, but um, you know, we had some instances where um, cell phone coverage wasn't, um, wasn't optimal for the hotspots. Um, so, you know, if we're, so as we're looking forward to next year and, um, and potentially working remotely in some capacity, um, you know, we do want to look at, you know, how best to provide internet to, to our um, students, because it's, it's not an easy question. It's not, it's not, it's not like we can go, we can hook up cable to their, to their home, but um, it is something that the tech, I know the technology working group is addressing. Um, but I would say, you know, by and large, it was, it was, a, it, was a, it was a success. So the only part, the only part I'd add on to that, Heidi, is that, you know, we're pretty confident that we were able to provide um, internet access. The, 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 what Matt's talking about in terms of that technology group going forward, there, there, there were surveys done in a couple of our buildings, and there will be surveys in others about how robust that, that internet connectivity was. And so we think we think for many families, just anecdotally, that that's a that's a slight at least a slightly different story, uh, in terms of how robust it actually was. And if this is to continue into the fall, we want to try to address that where we can as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, kudos to that team for getting that up and running. I think that's incredible. So well done. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Is there anything else on the finance? at this point. Hearing none, uh, moving on to continuing business and that was the update of the COVID-19 relative to the school closure, uh, which we heard last evening in the joint board. Um, is there someone that was going to uh, address this or no, no, what what we gave an update and again last night that update was largely focused on the end of the year guidance that we provided to the principals, which I've since sent to all the board members and really on that return to school initiative, um, which we talked about in, at some length last night. Um, and uh, I mean, we're happy to answer any questions on that, but really thought we'd turn this over tonight to um, to Bill McGowan to give an update on the high school and, and, and pieces of that and, and end of the year associated with, with uh, the high school. But if there are any questions on the pieces that we talked about last night, the sort of the end of the year guidance that we've provided, you know, sort of that whole return to school initiative, we're happy to, uh, to talk about them if you'd like. Okay. Uh, just uh, Bill will be on in a moment or? Bill's here right now. Ready yeah, to go. I understand. Uh, uh, Bill, I uh, did speak to uh, a couple of the teachers today and they're very excited about uh, um, a couple of the, I don't know whether they're webinars or what, with the teachers. And uh, uh, I guess it was pretty humorous, uh, some of the things that uh, you've been doing with the teachers and uh, um, you might want to address that as well. <laughs> I guess I'll have to include the school board in my um, pictures, but um, life on the farm is good. Um, <laughs> the sheep and the horses keep me entertained, so I've been uh, entertaining the staff with some of that. But um, again, uh, this is, I think this is a week 10 update that will be going out this week. I don't think anybody envisioned that we still be here. Um, and I think it's been challenging. It's been frustrating, but I think overall everybody's pulled together and we've made great progress. Now, that's not to say that you know, we haven't learned things and uh, if this continues, there's uh, a lot of things that we need to implement. Uh, but again, I've uh, been working with the seniors, um, 
scheduling graduation, cap and gown pickup, return of books. So information will be coming out at the end of this week. Uh, Dr. Lupini and I um, spoke with the senior class office offices today uh, regarding graduation. And I think we all know that they would love to have a live uh, in-person uh, ceremony, um, but given the recommendations and guidelines, as much as we look into doing that, um, we cannot do that right now at, you know, at this moment. Uh, but we did tell them that um, we will continue to receive uh, feedback as this week goes on and also into next week. And if anything changes, we will try to implement anything that we can. Uh, but right now the graduation will be um, a hybrid graduation. Um, and I will be updating the students this week as far as specifically why uh, we're taking this course of action uh, based on the governor's uh, directive and the Commission of Education's information. Uh, but we are open to um, changing things if we can. Um, it's disappointing, uh, this class. I mean, um, all the students, um, it's been very disappointing that we've had to cancel things uh, beginning in March. Um, I don't think I ever had a class to uh, go over this. Um, and it's not, Dr. Lupini and I were talking today, it's not why we came into education. We don't think, both of us don't think, and I think anybody in education, I do not think we'd ever have to be making these decisions and having these dis discussions with students. Uh, but we do wanna bring closure uh, to the school year. Uh, we do wanna celebrate the successes of the students. And right now the plan we have in place, um, we'll be able to do this. Um, seniors finish up next uh, Friday, uh, the following week, um, everybody else. Um, and again, right now it's just a logistic, I wouldn't say so much, challenge, it's a logistic challenge as far as scheduling the return of um, 1,000 books and materials from the <laughs> students, um, getting the students across the stage. Um, but I think um, in the end, uh, we'll have a great product for graduation. I'm not sure how many people saw the virtual coffee house last night, uh, but uh, what we've seen the students uh, have been able to do uh, with the support of the staff and the staff has been able to do um, we've had great success, um, you know, to, again, uh, we will be, we will overcome this. I think we will all be stronger as we move forward. Um, and we'll look back on this, um, in many years and say, okay, this is either what changed education or this, what it, you know, this is what attempted to change education, but we have survived and we will come out on the end much stronger and in a better place. Thank you, Bill. And, uh, Can I add here. something, Henry? Go right ahead. So um, I ran into a parent today um, and just wanted to let you guys know um, it was early on in, in this um, the shutdown when the, I think it was either the first or second um, survey went out for, from the kids. And this, uh, this student um, had obviously shared that it was a struggle for his family. She said, sorry, Bill McGowan, special services, the guidance counselors, and most of his teachers reached out to them. And I can tell you that I have never been more proud in my life of a group. This woman was completely blown away. And that's only one person. So. Every time you think you're not doing enough, know that you are because they are feeling it and they are, and they are aware that you all care. And that is one of the strongest things I think to come out of this is that our communities in all of our districts know truly how much the faculty and staff care about their kids. And um, if that's the only positive we take out of these 10, 12, 180 weeks than it is, but I just wanted you to know how much this person appreciated all of you and you reaching out. Um, and I can't say enough of how proud I am of all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions, other questions for Bill? I do. Bill, I was wondering if you could give us some um, more specifics about how 
youth for C graduation going down. I, I noticed in the letter that came out today from the nurses that they are encouraging things to be outside. So I'm just curious what the status might be with graduation and that request from the nurses. Okay. So right now the plan is to be, it will be outside. Um, we have uh, contacted um, some rental places to rent a tent uh, because originally when we scheduled it, we thought we'd have to have it in the gym, but after some feedback, um, I mean, I can't have the whole full graduation outside under a tent, but based on the model that we have, and we can provide a tent um, and some smaller tents to make sure that um, over the several days that everything will be sheltered. So currently, um, right now, the thinking is to put the stage um, behind the building, behind C-Wing, um, if you're familiar with the fields and stuff, kind of where the flagpole is, um, and there's several pine trees there to put the stage there. And what that does, it allows us to um, have people drive in that back driveway, uh, coming in from the gym entrance, come up behind the building, the student and their family members can get out. Uh, the student would walk across the stage, and again, it would be under the tent. We would announce their name, um, they would pick up their diploma um, and whatever other material we have at that time, uh, take some pictures, they'll be videotaped, um, get back in the car and then drive out through the entrance um, up by the um, Tech Ed building and out that way so we can keep everybody moving through, uh, limit the whole social distancing, but also have a time for the family to take pictures, we'll videotape it and in the end, uh, we'll put all that together, and the plan right now is to broadcast that um, on June 19th. And the only other part I would add to that, Heidi, is that, um, and, and Bill, Bill and I, I think, I think this makes five times we've now met with the senior class officers this afternoon. Um, I think it was the fifth, fifth time. I, I, don't, I don't know why you can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, now you're back. Oh, okay. So, um, and we committed to them that, that if there is something that changes along the way here, even after that ceremony were to take place that allowed us to do some kind of an in-person event, we, we will do it. If that's the end of June, we will do it. If it's in July, we will do it. If it's in August, we will do it if they, if they want to do that. We, we, will, we will make that happen if the parameters around some kind of executive order are such that we're, that we're permitted to do that. We're also monitoring what other districts around us are doing, particularly in the Southeast. We, one of the reasons we got together with the senior class officers again at the beginning of this week is they had information that Exeter was doing an in-person ceremony. They are not. They had surveyed parents about one option that would look something like that. But, th but as of today, that's not what they're doing. But um, we told them I have a Southeasters meeting tomorrow of the southeastern part of the state, if we hear some new information in there that lets us sort of pivot off of the model that we're doing now, we will absolutely do it. I have a meeting with the commissioner on Friday. If he gives us information that allows us to change in some way, we will make a change. So we're, we're trying to be flexible and yet work within the parameters that DHHS, the Department of Education, the governor's office, um, the CDC through the guidelines we put out today from our nurses, taking all that information into account in an effort to make sure we can honor this class as best we can and yet keep kids safe, keep kids and families safe. Right, absolutely, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. And you had no problem finding a tent. I noticed there's lots of tents at the restaurant, so you didn't have <laughs> trouble finding one for the school. Um, Principal McGowan, I'm sure you know, I was just thinking um, as I got online today that there's a, a very nice, if you need extra tents, the Winnicunit um, cross country running team has a beautiful, I'm sure it's not large enough for what your plan is, but they have the beautiful blue Winnicunit tent, which is about a double size. I know because I ordered it last year. So it's, it's a beautiful tent if you need something extra, the cross country team has one. Well, that's actually a good suggestion because, you know, based on conditions, you know, the more tents we can stage people. So I will reach out because I'm sure there's other sports teams that may have those tents that we could actually set up and just to give some visibility to those clubs and sports. Yeah, and it has sides on it too, so they can be protected from the weather or what have you. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Um, Oops. Bill, I have one question. 
Yeah. It's Mike Gravity. Hi. Um, what about participation or viewing by uh, board members on the winning cut? Well, I think, you know, we need to keep, uh, you know, the social guidelines. Can I lose you? Uh, nope, I can hear you. Can you hear Hello? me? Hi. Can you hear me? Mr. Rabido, can you hear, hear us? Oh, boy. Did I lose you? Uh, I, can, you I can hear you. Can you hear us? Well, I can answer that question since it is being recorded. Um, so, um, yes, uh, we are putting that schedule to, together. And again, it'll be over uh, several days, the week of June 8th. Uh, we will schedule students. So, uh, I've lost the audio completely. I hear nothing. And dial in again. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill, because he can, he can look it up. Um, so, um, you know, again, we've got to be respectful of the guidelines and recommendations, but um, and clearly all the events that we have, um, the school board is welcome to view some of it or all of it. Um, I will be wearing a mask. Any of the attendees will be wearing a mask, so we'll make sure those precautions are in place. Um, but um, I think uh, you're welcome to attend. Um, as you know, I know some teachers may want to attend, but again, we just need to make sure that uh, social distancing guidelines are uh, maintained uh, and the proper PPEs are worn uh, by the participants. Bill, the only other thing I would add to that is we need to make sure that our, our maximum planned numbers of attendees are, are maintained as well, and that's 10. And we're, we're, a lot, we're, asked, we're telling students they can bring up to four guests with them if right. they have masks and maintain. So we just have, you just have to be really cognizant of those numbers. I have a quick question. So it says, you know, 10 in a group, correct? So what would stop us from having 10 teachers at one end of a football field and 10 at another for kids to go see teachers? So I think, I think Bill, I don't think he wants to get into the specifics of it tonight, but I think there is some, um, something along the lines of a reverse parade. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's that's in the works. All right. So I mean, again, I mean, the teachers, you know, miss the students. Uh, definitely want to see them. So we we're talking about that. Um, I've been working with the town of Hampton. Uh, the parents um, also wanted to do a parade um, with the uh, senior class. Um, I spoke to De uh, Deputy Chief Dave Hobbs today. Um, we will work with the parents. So what makes it a little bit complicated is we have the four towns. Um, so I have been in communication um, with some of the parents as far as um, what the plan would be and if they can contact those um, other police chiefs in the town to put that together. So uh, whatever I can do to assist in that, we will. Um, but again, it does get challenging with the four towns. And you know, from my standpoint and when it comes to standpoint, and uh, we need to recognize all four towns uh, where the students come from. So we'll work with the uh, police chiefs. I'll work with the parents um, to do one, the reverse parade in Hampton, which is a little bit easier since it is in Hampton, uh, but we're also trying to figure out how we can do a parade um, to recognize the seniors um, at a later date. So we don't think that the same parade, a reverse parade, could be our senior parade plus the other students either in my understanding that there's families who prefer to have two separate parades than one reverse parade with all students and then a separate one for the seniors that would go through all the communities so that senior parade through all the communities um i know bill has to work through you know one two three four different police departments so I mean, could that be the same one? Sure, but it would mean being able to, to pull that off. Whereas a reverse parade, I think what he said earlier is he only has to deal with, with Hampton uh, to, do, to do that. Oh, I, I guess that's what I wanted to just clarify because a reverse parade to me seems to make sense to have everyone kind of come to Winnicunnet. But I guess in my hearing that they're thinking of having two separate parades, one at Winnicunnet and then one throughout the community, a different one throughout the communities. 
that's from the information I've received, that's how it looks like. Now, will the parents, um, you know, if we do the re reverse parade and we can, you know, all the students have a chance to drive by the school and see their teachers, um, would that <clears throat> possibly change um, the minds of the parents? I don't know, it may, um, but you know, there's things that I can control that um, I need to be able to do versus the support of uh, what um, is happening in the community. So um, I will work with everybody to, again, recognize these seniors, recognize the teachers, recognize the students, uh, given what um, we can put into place, um, either, you know, dealing with just, you know, the Hampton community, because that's where Winnicott High School is located, versus recognizing I can't hear him. Oh, all the other communities. Awful. We, have, we have one road that travels through all the communities. That's Route 1. And that's just coordinating with the police chiefs to have a parade from Northampton to Seabrook, and that encompasses all. But again, that's yeah. logistical. <laughs> and again, um, uh, everyone's working, and I could hear it in Bill's, uh, Bill and Bill, that the um, we want to get something going for the students, and uh, and uh, we can empathize with both of you on trying to do something that's a little different, but um, really a feeling for the students and with the with the teachers and the um, and teachers and students in mind. And uh, I want to thank you, Bill and Bill, for all the work that you're putting into this. And uh, is there anything else for for us here? No, not so much. Okay, okay, moving on to to new business. Um, and uh, that is federal grant as general as, uh, assistance, uh, excuse me, assurances. Yeah, so um, we are a recipient of um, federal grant monies. Um, so as such, on an annual basis, we do need to uh, provide these general assurances, which indicate that we abide by, you know, all regulations, policy, and law. Um, so, you know, that we don't discriminate or have conflicts of interest. Um, and we had that policy on the books. Um, so we do, um, we do need to, as part of this um, general assurances, we do need to um, provide this document to the school board, as well as um, have the superintendent sign off on it, as well as the school board chair. Be happy to answer any questions in regard to this document. Nope. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, moving on um, to B, federal uh, fiscal monitoring. So the other, uh, an another um, fun part of receiving federal grants is we are periodically audited. So we were audited um, this earlier uh, this year. Um, and um, it, we actually were, were very satisfied with the results. The only area of improvement is that we do need to update our policies. Um, we do have those policies in queue for the policy committee. Um, so we do anticipate that the policy committee will, um, will review these specific policies at the next policy committee meeting. And um, once we um, once we get those policies through, we should be all set. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, board, is there any questions to Matt? Yes. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we're looking at the lunch price recommendation. That's what an increase of fifteen cents. That's that's correct. So we, on an annual basis, we bring forth our proposed lunch and breakfast pricing. Um, for the following year. So in this case, it's next, it's 2020-2021. Um, we are recommending a 15 cent increase. So lunch will be $3.40 and breakfast will be $2.15. Um, and this is in line with USDA um, recommendations. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Matt, Matt when was the last time we went up on it? Um, so that was two years ago. This past year, we um, we maintained the three dollars and twenty five cents rates. Um, so if you look at the spreadsheet, it shows the the kind of the historical pricing. So it's three twenty five for two years in a row. Um, the year in seventeen eighteen, it was three dollars and ten cents. Um, in 2016, 17 is 27. We had a pretty big jump from 16, 17 to 17, 18, which was a result of that food um, service um, committee that we formed um, due to the, the significant deficit that the program was experiencing. So one of the, one of the uh, strategies and, and one, of, one of the really successes of that committee was that increase in price. Which, which brought us um, in line with, um, with comparable school districts in our area. Uh, do you think it's prudent to raise the price of the lunches at this time? Uh, with things that are going on with families? Uh, I know it's 15 cents, but 15 cents is 15 cents. And are we losing money? Do we need to do that? So right now we are in we're in good shape um, with our program. We are right where we need to be. Where um, you know where we where we don't we're not losing money. We're we're, we're breaking even essentially. Um, you know we made a couple thousand dollars last year, um, but we do need to increase it on a, on an annual basis uh, because there is that there are there is food price inflation um, and. And if you, I'm sure you've seen in the news, um, but um, we are seeing significant inflation, particularly when it comes to food costs. Um, so this this will this will actually, I mean, it, this won't even cover that cost of inflation. Um, but I would I would recommend increasing it um, for our students who do um, who are in need. Um, you know, they are covered under the the free and free and reduced, um, you know, plan. So, um, so I, th I think, I think this is a reasonable increase considering we had no increase last year. Uh, I, I, I didn't entertain a motion to can I, accept. Can I make a comment first? I got oh, Here he is, yay. <laughs> Finally here. Hey, great. Um, hey, the bugs are killing me. Um, Matt, during your during the Seabrook meeting, you explained that it had a, somewhat to do with the federal uh, budgeting for lunches, also. Yeah, so that's another component of it. Um, we are required, um, you know, as part of the USTA free and reduced, um, you know, participation so food service program, um, we are required to maintain a certain um, a price. Um, in order to to be you know to be part of the the food service program, um, so we we do so we do report in our prices and that's SAU wide. Um, so it's you know it's all it's all five or four districts um, you know an average of the price. So so it is important that we maintain um, a an, an average across all districts that that meets that threshold. So. Thank you. I, I got a question too. Um, Matt, you had said that the 15 cents came from recommendations from FDA. Is that right? No. So it's it's in line with the line. USDA. Um, okay. USDA. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, USDA is the Department of Agriculture, and they're they're the federal entity that. Um, you know that runs the national school lunch program, um, and does pro they're the ones that provide the um, the reimbursement for um, you know free and reduced. So was this done prior to the knowledge of COVID and the food inflation that you spoke of? The USDA price or yeah the the fifteenth. I guess I'm wondering was this an increase that would have happened independent of COVID? So, so we, I was planning on proposing an increase regardless of COVID-19. Okay. 
Yep. Um, it just, I, I mentioned the food inflation because that's a new development that, right. that makes it even more important that we do um, maintain or increase the costs. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I was kind of getting at that, that if you did, if you, if it goes up even more then the, the program's going to be at a deficit and that has to be covered somewhere else anyway. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, is there a motion? I'll make that motion, Henry, to increase the uh, lunch and the breakfast by 15 cents. Second. Great. Um, is there any other discussion? And moving on to a roll call on the vote. Yes. 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 Rhonda, you're on mute. Ron is muted. <laughs> muted. <laughs> well, you guys are good at reading lips, though, you know? They did it anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea until we got to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Just guessed. <laughs> Great. So yes. I have that as a unanimous vote. Yes, well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Know, you. We're going to have a whole new skill set at the end of this whole thing, it, right? True. No kidding. That's true. Okay. Um, under D is the withdrawal from the business maintenance expendable trust. Is there any other discuss discussion on this? If not, we can take a motion to do that. A motion we do that. I'll second that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. And Rhonda. Yes, please. Henry. Yes. Leslie. Yes. Heidi. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Tony. Yes. Thank you. I have the vote recorded. Thank you. Um, we have a couple other things coming up is the award of uh, three or four bids here. One is the uh, asphalt repair and seal coating. Matt, you want to go over that? Yeah, so the bid process has concluded for the proposed asphalt repairs and seal coating project. Um, bids were sent to 11 vendors, um, six of which attended the walkthrough and four submitted bids. Um, so we are recommending award of bid to New Hampshire Blacktop in the amount of $11,999. Um, and I, I will note that funding is from the 2020-2021 operating budget. Um, we, we had actually budgeted $25,000 um, for this project um, and, and this came in significantly lower than, than um, estimated. Okay. That was, that was the low bid? So the low bid was um, site improvements, um, which was 100, about $169. Um, less than New Hampshire Blacktop. However, we are recommending New Hampshire Blacktop um, because they have done this job for us um, uh, they, or they've done similar jobs for us um, on three or four other occasions. Um, we've been really happy with the quality of the work. Um, the, the, the RFP does allow for some um, for, for some leeway as far as, um, you know, not choosing the, the low bidder if based on um, you know previous experience and quality of work. Um, I'll also note that New Hampshire Blacktop is a local Hampton um, firm. Okay. Okay, is there a motion to accept the bid? And that, won't, that wouldn't start it until. Uh, Matt, that wouldn't start until uh, after July. Is that correct? The funds will be from the 2020-21 operating budget. We could do it sooner, but it likely will be after July. Okay, thank you. And we do have a motion as I... I, I motioned to okay. accept that, yes. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Rhonda, all. Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? 
Is that a yes, Mike? That's a yes. <laughs> Tony? Yes. I have the vote. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, we're looking at uh, uh, Chromebooks. Is this in the same vein, Matt, on the awarding of bid on the uh, Chrome bid? Yep. So this is another um, bid process that has concluded for our Chromebooks. Um, this was a cooperative bid process. So we did um, conduct this bid alongside our Seabrook School District um, in order to, um, you know, really achieve quantity of scale and, and optimal pricing. Um, we, we sent bids to eight vendors and three submitted bids. We are recommending an award of bid to Access Business Solutions in the amount of $121,062.60. Um, this Funding from this uh, from this um, for this purchase will be from the 2020-2021 operating budget, um, as well as um, from our Chromebook account, which um, does have um, some excess funds. Great, and this is a company that we've dealt with before. It is. I remember the name? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the bid? I'll record. make that motion. Thank you. Second. Second. I will, I will okay, second. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. I have the vote recorded. And uh, moving on to the replacement. Um, Computers? Yes, yeah, so um, we did finish our bid process for the replacement computers purchase. Um, bids were sent to eight vendors and five submitted bids. Um, we are recommending award of bid to, for, to Auckers in the amount of $17,480. Um, funding um, will come from the 2020-2021 operating budget. We had budgeted $21,000 for this purchase. We have a motion to accept. We have a motion to accept the. Oh, motion to accept. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. A second. Great. Thank you. And all those in favor? Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right, I have the vote recorded. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the awarding of a bid for a ride on more. I asked this question during the um, um, setting the agenda. I thought we had cut uh, the ride on more from the budget, but um, on just further review, I believe that they were looking for three, for, excuse me, two ride on mowers. And uh, Tony, do you remember that? Yeah, I'm trying to think that. It's a good question. Um, I know we cut something on a mower out of the budget. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I have the same recollection. Um, you were thinking it was two down to one? Yes. Well, there must be an easy way for us to check that, right? Matt, do you recall any of that? Um, we do have two mowers that are that have reached um, end of life. Um, I believe I believe Henry is correct. I mean, we can. I mean, I'm, I'm confident that this mower was in the budget. Um, we I can certainly verify in the budget that it's there. Um, let me just pull it up. What was the date of the, when we finished the budget? Probably about the last day that we all could see each other in person. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. January 15th, you guys, um, but I think you, you were done with the budget by then, weren't you? Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm looking at our budget presentation um, and it says this reflects an increase in grounds repair for irrigation repairs, rework and purchase of a mower offset by, um, and it goes on. So the mower was definitely in the budget. Um, no, that's, that's, that's what I recall. There was one mower and they had asked for two. Yeah, I mean, I believe we had, originally we had another mower. We had um, a cart that the board cut. Um, you know, we, we have a list of equipment uh, and, and that's always an account that we take a close look at. We have kind of a, a wish list and then we typically cut that down. But I, I think for the purposes of, you know, at least for this bid process, we, we, I did confirm that we do have the mower in the budget. Okay. Is, is, there, is there a motion to accept the bid? And bid, what is the bid? That didn't go to Rose, Rosencrantz because that was, um, they didn't complete the, the process. So, so it's another local. So two of, the, two of the bidders bid on the wrong mower. Um, so we are, so we did receive four bids um, and we are recommending award a bid to JM Hayden Equipment and that's in the amount of $12,588.42. Um, we had budgeted $14,000 out of the 2020-2021 operating budget. Hey, thank you, Matt. I'll make that motion thank to accept you. the bid. Thank you. Is there a second to that? No. Second. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Uh, Rhonda, you want to start? Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. I have the vote recorded. Thank you. Mike, I'm getting a little jealous looking at you and where you are, except it's in New York. But. Uh, Enjoy, enjoy the weekend. I'm in the Adirondacks. This is the uh, house. One second. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks for that, Mike. And behind <laughs> me is the uh, lake. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks a lot, Mike. I, I could be here a while. <laughs> I haven't right. left this room in two months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed it. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> They're not opening the beach, so the water's open here. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Okay. Uh it, we're gonna move on to personnel. We uh, still have we still have roof repairs, Henry. We've, we've got some roof roof repairs on the I had a fold out here. Um is there a motion to accept the bid for roof repairs? Motion to accept. I'll second, a second. That. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Um, Rhonda? Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. I have your vote recorded. Thank you. Uh, moving on to personnel, there, uh, uh, the resignation um, and um, I don't have it in front of me who resigned. It's Karen Boxell, our ESOL teacher. Uh, you want to discuss that in, in part of the yes. non-public. Okay, right. And uh, uh, moving on to public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay, hearing none, we can move on to... Uh, uh, okay, those are the other items. Uh, non-public, is, is there a motion? to go into non-public. Anything else, Matt, or Bill or Bill? No. Okay. I will okay. motion to go into non-public. Thank you. Second. 
Second. Thank you, sir. Okay, Henry, yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Mike? Yes. <laughs> and Tony? Yes. All right. Now, if you guys will just give me a moment, we'll get this set up for you. And then we are going to put people back in the... Um, It wants to keep them over. Hang on, I got to get to the right spot. Here you go. I've also unlocked the meeting. Okay. Um, and we are again recording. Thank you. Um, and resuming that uh, public meeting, um, uh, recommendation for an English teacher. Uh, Grades nine through 12, is there a motion to accept the nomination of, is that Ms. Plonsky? I believe that's right, is that right, Bill? You're on mute. Yes, the, the English teacher is Lauren Plonsky. Thank you. <coughs> I will accept the nomination for Lauren Plonsky as an English teacher. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. Henry Marsh? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. I have that vote recorded. Thank you. Uh, moving down to the... Um, I'll let uh, Bill McGowan give this uh, nomination to pronounce this person's last name. <laughs> um, for the PE health teacher, uh, the nomination is for um, Aubrey Bell Bellaconis. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Thank you. And all in favor? Henry, yes. Henry? Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. Okay, I have that vote recorded. Thank you. Uh, the next is the uh, resignation of uh, uh, Ms. Bogzell. And is there a motion to accept the retirement? Retirement, yeah. I'll make the motion to accept the retirement. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor and... Uh, Henry? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Heidi? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Tony? Yes. I have the vote recorded. I love your t-shirt. I love your t-shirt. Who's? Tony. Oh, where'd he go? What's he? Ah! <laughs> Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, are, the, the next meeting dates are coming up. Are you making an effective date? I'm sorry, I should have asked that sooner with that, that motion to accept that retirement was... Usually the retirements are the end of the school year. Okay. And uh, next meeting date is, uh, we'll get a joint board on... Tuesday uh, night. Excuse me. Uh, let's go. Joint board is May 26th at six o'clock. And then the Winnicott board meeting is June 17th uh, at 630. Uh, and uh, let's see. Who'd like to adjourn the meeting? Me. Motion okay. to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. I got a second. A second. Thank All you. Right. I think everybody unanimous on that. Yes, yes. ma'am. Thank you. You guys Thank have a great weekend. Have, have a great, great weekend, weekend, everyone. I need to go kill a chicken for dinner. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for all.